Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Dimple Khosla from Dyal Singh College, Karnal. Today we are going to talk on the module System Approach to Management from the paper Principles and Practice of Management. Let us see what we are going to learn in this module. Meaning of System, Meaning of System Approach, Key Concepts of System Approach, Features of System Approach, Critical Evaluation of System Approach, Relationship between System Approach and Contingency Approach. So let us start with the introduction. There are various approaches to management like classical approach, neoclassical approach and modern approach. Systems approach to management is a part of modern approach. This approach was developed by Chester I. Bernard, Herbert Simon and their colleagues. Due to the limitations of considering only one particular aspect by classical and neoclassical approach, system approach was developed. This approach considers the organization as a whole rather than considering some particular aspect. Meaning of system. System, as the name suggests, is a group of related parts that move or work together like the human body consists of several parts and each part works in connection with the other. A single function of the body is performed when a number of organs work together as a system. According to the definition given by the Webopedia, system means a group of interdependent items that interact regularly to perform a task. In other words, it is an established or organized procedure. Meaning of system approach. Now relating the word system with approach to management. It conveys that the whole of the organization is interconnected and interdependent. Every organization has a structure where we can see the various departments in which the whole of the organization is divided. Each department works at its own but cannot work in absolute isolation. It has to depend on other departments for various functions to be performed. So, the efficiency of one department depends upon the efficiency of another department. For example, if purchase department does not purchase raw material in time, production department cannot produce the product in time. Likewise, if the finance department does not provide finance well in time to the purchase department, purchase department cannot fulfill the requirement of the production department. So, here it can be said that each department works as a subsystem to make the whole organization a system. Managers following this approach to management considers the organization as a whole rather than considering various parts of the organization separately. Now let us first explain what are the key concepts of a system. The first one comes subsystem. 
a system is made up of various integrated and interdependent parts each such part is known as a sub system for example an automobile firm may have several departments like purchase department production department finance department marketing department personnel department etc so each such department is a subsystem of the whole firm and the whole firm is a subsystem of the automobile industry which is a subsystem of the indian economic system and which is a subsystem of the world economic system each subsystem is a part of the other subsystem and change in one subsystem leads to a change in other subsystem open and closed system the system may be a closed system or an open system depending upon their interaction with the environment here environment is the sum total of the factors and forces outside the organization such as customers competitors suppliers investors government etc the system which have no interaction with the environment self contained rigid static and mechanical are known as the closed systems these are not at all affected by the environmental factors whereas on the other hand open systems are those which interacts with the outside environment are dynamic and flexible in nature systems approach to management follows open system and thus receive inputs from the environment and gives output to the environment but in fact systems should not be differentiated as open or closed rather they should be differentiated on the basis of degree of openness because there is hardly any system which is not at all affected by the environmental forces environmental forces are strong enough to put effect on any system so if we consider a system to be closed we are forgetting the importance of the environmental forces let us understand what is synergy according to the business dictionary synergy is a state in which two or more things work together in a particularly fruitful way that produce an effect which is greater than the sum of their individual effects in other words it can be expressed as the whole is greater than the sum of its parts it actually refers to the teamwork in which all individuals work together and their collective total output is more than the sum of their individual output if they do it in isolation so in regard to the system approach to management we can say that a business organization operates more if efficiently if it works in cooperation with each other in a systematic manner rather than working separately the next element is system boundary the line that separates the system from its environment is known as boundary if the boundary is visible 
and rigid like a wall. It is like the closed system. But if the boundary is flexible and is visible in form of relationship between the various parts of the organization and environment, it is like open system. From here, a manager can also know which part he can better control and which he cannot control. For example, he cannot change the policies made by the government but can replace a worker who is not performing well. Since the policies made by the government are external factors which are completely out of the control and so these are a clear boundary line. But if we want to replace a worker that comes totally under the decision making power of a manager. So that can be controlled by him. Now comes the feedback. Feedback means the response which may either be positive or negative. If the feedback is positive, then the manager gets motivated as the plan he initiated was successful. And if feedback is negative, he has to check whether the problem is there or not and what are the causes and what are the possible ways to remove it. Features of System Approach to Management Now let us understand what are the various features of this approach. The first is Hierarchy of Subsystem. It is the basic feature of System Approach which explains that within an organization there are several parts where each part is considered to be a subsystem of another subsystem. For example, you also see in your education system, there are several departments like arts, science and commerce in a college. So an institute that is a part of the university and university that is a part of the education system. So there is a complete hierarchy of subsystem. Another example that we can take that planet is a part of the solar system. Solar system is a part of galaxy. Galaxy is a part of heavenly bodies and heavenly bodies are a part of universe. So we see each subsystem is a part of another subsystem. Similarly, in an organization, there are many interdependent parts and each part may consist of various subparts. The next feature is interrelated and interdependent. The subsystem or parts prevailing in a system are connected to each other and performance of one part is affected by the performance of the other. These subparts are always considered in connection to each other and not in isolation. Boundary. This approach clearly defines what is within the organization and what is outside the organization. In other words, a manager is well aware about the controllable factors and uncontrollable factors. Input-output process. System takes input from the environment and what it gives back? It gives back output to the environment. As raw material is purchased from the market, processed in the organization 
and transformed into the finished product to supply again back into the market. Open system. As discussed earlier, that system can be either closed or open. An organization being a social system is an open system, which puts effect on the environment and is also affected by the environment. Another feature of system approach is adaptive. Adaptability means adjusting with the changing environment. Under the system approach to management, the organization is an open organization and it takes input from the environment and adjust accordingly. In the today's competitive world, if an organization fails to be adaptive, it cannot survive. So to be there in the competitive world, it has to adjust with the environmental forces. The another feature is dynamic. An organization cannot be static. It has to move on and on with every change in the environment. So system approach says that the organization is dynamic and responsive. Within an organization, there are several subsystems and the process in between these subsystems are all dynamic and vulnerable. Next point is multidisciplinary. Management in any organization is not influenced by a single discipline. It is a result of so many disciplines like economics, statistics, sociology, psychology, operation research, mathematics and various schools of management thoughts. Management is also described as both science as well as arts since it has its own principles which are applied in most of the organizations and it tries to do the work in a systematic manner. This approach to management integrates knowledge from all the above mentioned disciplines and many more. Probabilistic. In a chemical reaction, one can always be sure that what will be the result of mixing different compounds. But in an organization, a manager cannot be sure that what will be the exact result of his efforts. Thus, system approach to management says that it is probabilistic because the outcome is not certain. For example, a manager asks purchase manager to buy more of raw material in comparison to the last month in anticipation of the huge demand in the near future. But he can just predict the probable demand and not the exact demand. Critical Evaluation of System Approach to Management Every coin has two sides. The one side if explains the positive, the another side explain the negatives. So let us first explain the contributions given by the system approach to management. The first one. It enables a manager to think correctly and positively about how to get the things done and teaches him to consider the organization as a whole to achieve the overall effectiveness 
rather than to consider each individual part separately. It follows management by objective as the focus is strived to achieve organizational objective side by side fulfilling the individual objective of the subsystem. Management by objective as we all know actually means not to forget the individual objectives of every employee, again targeting towards the major objective of the organization. It helps the manager in understanding the impact of environmental factors as the environment is dynamic and always keeps on changing. So it enables a manager to be more and more adaptive. Another contribution is that it tells the managers about the multi-level and multi-dimensional features of management. It explains how it is applied at both micro and macro levels. At micro level, it may consider even a small subsystem and at macro level, it may consider even the whole business system. System approach to management also implies that managers should have an analytical observation power. He should be able to analyze what are the available opportunities and to allocate the resources considerably. New ideas should also be accepted by a manager, even from a lower level employee. He should teach his employees the benefits of teamwork or the importance of synergy. So this approach actually makes him a real motivator. The mechanism of feedback in this approach provides the manager chances to reallocate the resources according to the changed environment and also to remove the problems which arise in the path of the performance. Since it is only the feedback which can tell that the resources are going in a correct path or these need to be diversified. Moving towards the limitations. In spite of being much better than the classical and neoclassical approaches to management, system theory cannot be said as an absolutely perfect theory. It suffers from the following limitations. Number one, this approach lacks universality. It is suitable for the large business organizations, but not for the small concerns. It is also more beneficial for manufacturing concerns rather than service providers. The another limitation of this theory is that this theory does not explain the relationship among different variables that can be applied to all business concerns. System approach says that all subsystems are interrelated and interdependent, but to what extent it does not specify. It actually does not explain how much 
one department depends upon the another and to what level it will affect the total efficiency if one subsystem is not working with the another subsystem. This approach is over conceptual. The another limitation is it does not explain how the subsystems of the specific organization is uniquely related in a given environment. Relationship between contingency approach and systems approach. System approach has failed to establish a relationship between the organization and the environment, whereas the environment analysis is one of the major parts of the conceptual framework for contingency approach. It is the foremost duty of the manager to analyze the environment and take action according to the result of the analysis. Contingency approach follows the basic ideas and concepts given by the systems approach, but the followers of contingency approach opines that system approach is not targeted towards managerial action. System approach is more concentrated towards human behavior and the various parts of the organization, that is, how the various subparts are connected to each other. Whereas, contingency approach concentrates on structural adaptation of the organization with its inside and outside environment. It can be said that contingency approach has emerged and built up over the system approach. So both the approaches can go together in an organization. A manager can decide within the various subsystems what different strategies should be adopted by him in different situations. So students, let's now summarize what we have learned in this module. To conclude, we can say that system approach is a set of various interrelated and interdependent subsets working together to achieve a common goal. It helps the manager to bring coordination at various levels and to analyze systematically. This approach provides a unified focus to the organizational efforts. It has given a new sight to the managers. Thank you.